Hey everybody, what's going on? Shabby Do here, and today I've got 10 shabby tips for you in how to progress smoothly through Autonauts and how to have a great shabby start. But all right, let's get right into it here. And guys, I just want to start off by saying firstly, tip number 10 is the most important. So make sure to stick around for that as well, because there'll be a little quiz at the end on it. OK, and I'm telling you, tip number 10 is the one you need to know the most. OK, but tip number one is one of the most crucial ones that you are going to use from the very beginning all the way until the end game. And that is what I've deemed as dense farming or we're going to call it shabby farming. I don't know, but dense farming. So I've got an example of it here with my trees here and i want to show you guys this because this is what you're going to first make is a lumber yard right so what you do is you take a soil patch of three by three actually i'll show you with this first because it's a little easier to see over here so you take these are my pumpkins for instance you take patches of three by three and you put a spacing in between it with some roads these are le these are higher tier roads but you'll have like a crude track to put in we'll get into roads later and then you make another three by three and i usually do a base of four three by threes like this as my basis and starter farm for anything whether it's pumpkins apples wood weeds grass cereal cotton does not matter if you've got a farm do this because it's going to utilize space the best and it's going to keep your bots moving as quick as possible with those roads in between especially when they need to cut across so here's the lumber yard you can see i've utilized that same pattern but i've extended it because you can make it as big or as small as you want there's seven of these so i've got 14 different squat quadrants of three by threes so that's amazing coverage okay and now tip 1.5 with the dense farming put fences around everything okay when stuff is cro cropped out everything will fall within a square of it which means it can fall outside the zone you want it to if you put a fence in nothing will fall past a fence okay so that's why i've got fencing all around the outside here so dense farming is going to help you for everything here's my pumpkin patch Here's my cotton, my cereal, my weeds. My grass is a little bugged out since I beat the game, but you know, I've got grass over here too. And it is it is amazing. And you are gonna get the most production out of it. And if you ever need more, you just add a second one next to it or another one, or just four is fine. Depends how much you need and what your production is. Now, now that's tip number one, dense farming. Tip number two, which goes into some of the first functions you'll ever create. And that's using the code for what is called an if function. The if function is one of the most, in my opinion, it is the most crucial function besides a repeat function. You know, repeat forever. Obviously, we need that to keep going. But if functions keep everything running smooth. So when once you have your bot set up to create tools automatically and store them into a local storage, like we can see here, like this is my crude axe storage what you do is you have your woodcutter for instance one of the first bots you're going to make you're going to set an if function if let me go in here so you come over here if you drag it in here if your hands are empty you know come over here to your crude axe storage take that drag those in i'll just repeat delete this whole thing there we go i'm just going to keep this one because i don't feel like clicking over there you'll go there and do that and then you'll repeat this forever that can be your first one, but the better code for this is if you copy this and you hit this button down here, so this just adds a repeat, it's the same thing as this. If you repeat this until question mark is full, second most important function right here. First if, second repeat until something is full. What you do is you click this question mark here, and for instance, I want him to do it until my log storage is full. Check this button off. This is an exit repeat function. So that means if something in here fails, like he can't find a tree, he can't move to it, or he can't use his held item because it broke, he'll exit this function here and carry on to the next. Now what that means is he'll then exit this, start back at the top, oh, it's repeating. Is his hands empty? Yes, I need to go get an act. And then he starts back up again. And this will repeat until the storage is full. So like you can see here, None of my bots are working right now. All my trees are full. That's because this storage is full. They're all set to not work if a storage is full because I don't need a mess over here, right? I don't need extra trees cut down. I want productivity at the highest while keeping storage capacities topped off. That's how you do it. Repeat until something is full. If you have a gatherer, if your hands are empty, go get your designated tool, whether it's an ax, a pickaxe, a bucket, a hoe, doesn't matter. Same functions work for everything, okay? 
That is your if function and your repeat function. So that's your tip two and 2.5. The next one I'm gonna talk about is transport bots. Early on in the game, you're not gonna have big storage units like this. The max you're gonna have is 100, like this tree seed storage here. Later, you can get ones that fit 1,000 and the pallets can get up to 500. But I've got here two of them, right? Now you can set up big complicated if functions, like if this one is, if log storage one is empty, go to log storage two. But that sets up a lot of variables in your code. And at the end of the day with Autonauts, simplicity is key. Yeah, you can set up this long code with 64 kilobits of information at the end of the game. But I'm telling you right now, most of my bots do not have a code longer than about seven different items because it's unnecessary. It takes too much time to be checking all these different things and it creates too many options for failure and the bots getting locked into not being able to do anything. So if you need more storage units, which I do suggest early in the game for like food and logs, what you do is you have one main storage here where all of your gathering bots will input all of your units into here. So let's use logs for example. All of my log loggers pick up logs and put them into this storage unit. Then you see these bots running around. I've got log transfer. They'll take it from storage one or 51 in this case, and they'll move it to 50. And that's their whole job is to move them from the, the first one where the bots are harvesting and putting them in and putting them into the second one. Now, if you want to go more than two, you then create another bot to take it from this middle one and then put it to the third one. You don't want to keep, you don't, again, simplicity is key have more bots to keep doing the job because then the job stays fluid. Then what you do, whether you have two or five, you then have all the guys and bots that you need to pull the materials from for whatever it is, whether it's making tools, turning logs into planks, you then have them pull from that final one where that last log transfer is taking place. So for instance, let me, here's, a, here's tip 3.5. If you press L and click on a, anything, It'll tell you every bot that's tied to it. An orange one means the bot's not working or it's paused. Green are active bots. So these are all of my bots tied to this one storage unit. And you can see it's all of my uh, harvesters. Okay. Again, with this one, now I've got my transfers. And then these are all the bots that take from here, from this storage and use those. So you tie them to your final log storage because at the end of the day, when you're harvesting new material, it's going to be transported from A to B to C to however long you make it. I don't suggest more than three, though. It's unnecessary for the most part. And they'll always take from the last one, which will be the one that's full. And then you have your harvesters using that repeat until something is full. The first one where the bots put them into in the first place, because at the end of the day, this will be the last one full because everyone's going to transfer from here to here. So once this one is full, B in this instance, A will then start to fill up because there's nothing left to transfer because it's full because no one's using it. And then that'll get stocked up. So that is the best way to have multiple storage units for one item and how to tie all of your bots to those storage units. Time to one. Don't have if else statements like if log storage A is empty, else go to B or whatever, you know, if if there's material in storage A, go to A, otherwise go to B. But what happens is they could be on their way and then that storage is now empty. And then they'll sit there and wait and wait and wait and they won't repeat that code because they're already going to pick it up. So it creates way too many variables. Keep it simple, stupid, okay? That's the code. Keep it simple, stupid, kiss, okay? If you know where that's from, put that down in the comments below. Only good people know where that's from. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Now, so that's your transport bots. Let's get into teams, okay? So let's talk about bot teams, okay? Tip number four, teams. You can see here, here is my logging team. This is all of my bots that have to deal with logging. Now watch, if I come over here, and the great thing about teams is not only does it keep everything organized and you can color code them so you can see them specifically, but you can stop them all at once and you can call them all over to you at one time. There have been many times where I've like recoded a bunch of bots because I went from a crude axe to a metal axe, so I need to get all my loggers over here so I could change their codes real quick. So you, and then you can start them all back up again. Look, there they all go. 
why is this great? One, organization is key. You're gonna go insane if you have 900 bots like me and you don't have a single team. I'm telling you, I go insane when, when I do have all these teams. I've got teams of 100 bots in here. You ready? Where is it? My metal crafting. 96 bots in my metal crafting. Pumpkin patch, 25. Just my bots to make planks, poles, and pegs? I've got 41 bots in that team. That's from crafting, storage, transport, etc. It's ridiculous. Make your teams, okay? Now, that's your bot teams. Let's get into one of the key things that kills everyone at the beginning of the game. Charging your bots, okay? Now, I've got a team here for it. Now, when you get to Mark three bots at the end of the game, it's going to take you a while, but they don't need to be charged anymore. After their initial charge, they don't have to be charged up again. So let's call this team over here. Stop them. Everyone come over to me. So we can see this one's coming over and he's got a zone around him. Now, this is how to make a charge team and how to make them very successful. Okay. So what we do is very simple. We create a team. So I've got a team of four bots here. We can see them. You're going to create a sign, whatever sign you can create at the time. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick the sign up, leave a nice comment on there for everyone to see, subscribe and comment below. Then you're going to press Z when you're on this. That's how you can edit the sign and you're going to hit link area. And then you're going to make this as big as you can. Okay. Now what this does is it creates an area for this sign. Now, if I've got BP charge here, that's just the name of this bot. You can see his code is set to find the nearest JIT charge and he's attached to the sign. Now, usually what you see is something like this, right? Here's the, here's the area. You can take it, move it around, make it as big as the bot will allow you. Usually it looks something like this when you first start off. I think like 13 by 13 is your first one. But what you can do is click this little smiley face house over here, select structure, okay? We're gonna click that. The sign has to be on the ground, okay? So make sure the sign is on the ground. Then you're gonna click on that and hit okay. So that ties the action of finding the nearest bot to the sign. Then if they're going, whenever there's a bot within that range, they're gonna go charge them. Now, how does that make it different? Well, what you do is you give this sign, I gotta find him, where is he? He's in here somewhere, here he is, you. You create a bot, I call him, I call him a charge relay. You give him the sign, and then all you have him do is move around the base. So you can see here, he just has a bunch of different movements. Now let's send him out. He's moving. So now we're not going to see any bots get charged up because I don't have too many bots that need charging anymore. But he walks around a very specific area. And whenever a dead bot is in that zone now, as he moves around, all of those charge bots will rush him and go pick him up. That's how you can do it so that you have a roving team of charge bots. And then all you have to do is make, you know, 10 charge bots, however many you need for your base and have them move around the base. When it gets a bit bigger, I suggest making two relay teams. Have one work on like say the left side and one work on the right side. Or if you have like a higher traffic area, like my farm here, I have two bots that just sit here and they're attached to the shabby petting zoo sign. And they're just here to keep these guys placated. It's like one bot that charges up all these other bots. Very high traffic area, got its own charger. Otherwise, I have bots like this where they run around and they just charge. That's the only one left because, um, actually here's another charge relay team. And you can see here he is, he's running around. He just runs around my farm, high, high traffic area. I got rid of the other ones. Oh, and here's another one, sorry. I got rid of the other teams I had because you don't need to charge once you have a Mark III, but look at all these different teams. Electric Slide, he's the one that runs around. You can see he has a smaller sign. He was one of my very original teams. And he just, they just run around the base and the bots all go and charge bots. It's amazing absolutely critical and you'll never have a dead bot for more than like 10 seconds as the bots take a second to get to where they are from wherever they were just standing it is it is life-changing you will never go back to having a bot charging someone that's not attached to a, a sign held by another bot that just runs around i guarantee it tell me wrong in the comments below if you disagree though i'd love to hear why all right so that is charge teams and signs so you can use signs for anything else too but that's my favorite use of the sign right there especially early game so let's get into bot creation and copying code so i'm just going to open up a cheat menu here because i'm done the game and i want to show you guys this so what we can do is i'm going to grab this bot here let's say i needed to add a bot this is like one you're going to normally see here i need to add a new bot to my charge team now instead of waiting for a bot to die, 
clicking on this guy, having record, and quickly trying to get that charge in there before someone else fills it, you can copy code from one bot to another fairly early in the game using the crude data disk. You make it at your the same place you make bots, okay? And then what you do is you go up to the bot. The bot cannot be operating, so they got to be paused. Or sorry, they got to be off. Then you go up to them and hold control while you're holding the disk and left click. And you see how it had that little up sign there? So that means I uploaded the data from the bot to my disk. Oh, that's, that's a different bot. We'll get into that too. And then if you hold control and right click a bot. Now I want to show you first. See, he has no code. Right, hold control and right click. Download, you see that? It says download there. Now if we click him, he has the same code as that other robot, and now I can just hit play, change the name, you know, charge team five or whatever, four. And now he's good to go. He's going to go off and make happiness happen. Keep bots charged. Now, so that's your crude data disk. Amazing in the early game, okay? The second thing that you're going to get that's similar to this is called the bot database and I'm going to come up to it up here. Now what this does is it takes the crew data disk and multiplies it by a thousand. Okay. So whoops, wrong button. So if I go into the database here, I can find any bot. So like if I wanted to find my woodcutters, this is where naming comes into effect here. You know, woodcutter, I've got my Picassos who do all my painting. I've got, oh, I need to find something for my pumpkins, right? I needed to look for my pumpkin hole diggers, right? So I found him. If I click this button down here now, that only shows up once you build your bot database. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. It's part of the game, so figure it out. You're going to click bot database right here. And then you can upload the script and watch the top. Boom. Pumpkin hole dig one. Now, if I had a new bot, where am I? Oops, wrong button. Now let's get a new bot in here. Let's. So I've got this guy here, right? He's going to be my new pumpkin hole digger. Pumpkin hole digger. Differ digger that works enough if i click the same button bot database instead of hitting upload i can come over here and hit download script to bot hit that and then boom send him off now he's going to go play with everyone else and dig holes it is an amazing code that this bot database i got it and i didn't unlock it for a couple time for a couple days i regretted it as soon as i got it it is more game changing than the data disk because you don't have to go find your disk, find your bots, move them around. You don't have to stop a bot to upload their data. That's just great. You just have to stop a bot to download the data onto that bot. That's all. That is your bot database. So we just got bot teams copying data with a, a, a crude data disk before you get the bot database, okay? Now let's get into tip number seven here. So. Tip with the crew data disk and the bot database, or the crew data disk and the base, that's tip six right there, right? Tip seven, roads. So I've got a little, nice little road demonstration here. Roads speed up how fast you move. You can obviously see my guy's got a little trike. It's something you get later on in the game to help you move a little faster. But let's get my guy in here. So this is the crude or the sandy track, right? See the speed there? Not terrible, not great. That's like your tier one road. The crude stone track, same thing, see? Pretty decent. Then you've got your crude road. Oh, that's faster, that's nice. And then you get your yellow brick road, which is your final roads. Look at that, nice, fast, and your bots move even faster on these. Build roads, you can see these guys going across the road. Without that road there, they would be moving much slower. These are interior, so like this is a brick road. It has, I find the, in this, these are bridges. These don't really move much faster than like a tier one or two road, but these go these yellow brick roads, critical. Your crude roads, critical. Even your crude stone tracks, critical in the beginning of the game. Set your bots up to make these for you and place your roads in between all your structures and where your bots are moving to keep them moving faster because speed is efficiency in this game. Remember, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, let's carry on. So that's your tip number seven right there. Tip number eight. This is almost as important as tip number 10, okay? Spacing your base, okay? And what I mean by that is, let's take a look at the pyramid here. You know, if you haven't started playing yet or you're just starting, you know, you need food to have a level one colonist. You need a food and a house for tier two. Then you need clothing, toys, medicine, education, and culture or art, okay? 
Now, once you get higher, let's use tier four, for example, right? Let's keep it simple. At tier four, you need that a new item comes out at every tier. So at tier four, you now have to create a new toy. Okay, so that'll be brand new. So now you need a whole production area for toys. But then for clothing, you're going to need tier four clothing, a tier four house and tier four food. Then at tier five, you're now going to need a tier five toy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tier five shelter, tier five clothing, tier five food, so on and so on and so on. So you're spacing is going to get cramped if you don't take this into account early and you might be kicking yourself in the butt later for it so we can see here like mine's a little tight i didn't take too much consideration in the beginning i tried i moved my base around once or twice as well and i just kind of settled on this when i was getting near the end but we can see here my lumber is all here all of my crafting involving my lumber is right next to it, including the storages i've got my village in the center of everything I've got up here, this is like my clay factory because my clay deposit was way over here and I had a small one here, but this is where all my clay was done. So clay, this is where anything that grew besides a tree went. So this is all of my field farming. And then over here, I've got like a clothing factory. I've got a bakery right here for uh, butter and then flour because the cows were over here and the cereal was here as well. And then this is my kitchen where all the food is cooked, okay? I've got, this is where all my, my medicine is made. Here's my art. This is where all my metal items are made. There's so much metal, okay? So make sure you have proper spacing for everything because you want to have as smooth of a transfer for all of your items to get to the center of your base, which should be your colonists, okay? So that is why spacing is key because if you stay too small in the beginning, you're going to have stuff everywhere. And then it's, a, it's honestly... A disaster trying to move your entire base around it's not hard it's just very time consuming so think about your spacing early on think of it like quadrants set up a little zone this will be my my fields this is going to be my wood area this is going to be where i do all my cooking all my clothes etc 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 okay try and do it as the best as you can it doesn't need to be perfect but give yourself space okay and remember remember tier, tip seven roads even though there's some space there, if you put roads in between, your boss will travel plenty quick through them, okay? So don't worry about there being a little bit of gap because although your colonists have needs, it takes them a while to refill those needs. Once they get something, they're usually pretty happy for a bit, especially in the later tiers. So having to bring stuff down there, they're usually on standby, okay? So don't worry too much about spacing in the sense of things being too far away. Give yourself some distance. Give yourself the space you need, okay? Now, tip number nine, more is better. What do I mean by that? More bots is better than fewer bots. Simple bots. Remember what I said before? Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Okay, I've got 942 bots, all right? I do not have a single bot out there that, you know, I could have a bot that comes in here and his sole purpose, find a tree, cut the tree down, pick up the log, store the log, find a stick, pick up the stick, find a tree seed store the tree seed okay yeah you have the space for all of that and now you have one self-sufficient bot that does the entire process of lumbering all by himself even if you have 20 of those bots they're going to be so convoluted and lost that your production speed will be brought to a halt because you have one bot trying to do so many different things at one time keep it simple stupid one bot cuts the trees down one bot digs the stump out one bot plants the tree seed one bot picks up the tree seeds and stores them in a storage unit one bot picks up sticks put them in a storage unit another bot picks up logs and put them in the storage unit boom process done all of a sudden now you see i'm not cutting trees down fast enough grab my crude storage disc grab a new bot upload the woodcutter information download it into the new bot press play and go add them to my logging team and i'm done oh I'm not digging holes fast enough, boom, copy the hole digger over, paste it, play, all done. If you have one bot doing everything, not only are you going to be slow and inefficient, but it's going to be a disaster when you try and add more bots, okay? Especially in the beginning, because you don't have a lot of brain space in our, in our robots. They're very basic. So keep it simple, stupid. Bot should do one thing and do it well. And then you'll have optimacy, efficiency, and most of all, speed. Speed is important in this game. Here's a high level example here, okay? 
coming over. Let's look at my paintings here. Everything's kind of crashed to a halt because I've I've fixed the, I've finished the game. But for this painting, I need canvas, five red paint, three yellow paint, a blue paint, and three wove. Okay. I have a bot that brings canvas. I have a bot to bring red paint, one for yellow paint, one for blue paint, and one for wove. One of those bots will have a code on there saying until the storage that houses all these are full, add them in. Otherwise, he's just going to wait. All right. That's where we talked about that repeat until something is full. That's why this is sitting here, because I have it set for WUV. If if the storage is full, he's not going to add WUV. Once it's em once it's not full, he'll add the WUV and production will begin again. OK, it's a great code. And then there'll be a so that's five bots for one thing. Then the sixth bot comes in. He picks up the item and puts it in the storage unit. Everyone is smooth. Everyone's on standby and just waiting. OK, if you have a long process in, not only is it going to take a lot of time for them to run back and forth between all these high level materials, um, they're just going to freeze up eventually as well. Something might be full, something might be empty, and they're going to sit there and wait. And sometimes when you restart a game, the bots get confused. They restart from the beginning and they may have had something in their hand and it causes their code to go out of whack. Keep it simple, stupid. OK, kiss. Remember, if you know where that's from, leave that in a comment down below. But all right, guys, that is your nine tips here. We're going to get into the 10th tip, which is the most important for successfully playing through Autonauts and ascending. OK, seatbelts on. This is the tip that's going to get you through from tier one to tier eight ascendancy all the way through when you need power, metal, everything. You're building castles. Have fun. Slow down and have fun. This game, there's no repercussions if you make a mistake. If you go too fat, too far, too fast, you can take it back. And, you know, if you accidentally go to tier five and you weren't ready because you can't keep up with production, start giving them tier four items again. You've already got them. Slow yourself down. Relax. Does not matter. Your colonists will not die if you don't feed them. They'll just be unhappy. And at the end of the day, who cares if they're unhappy? You know, get your coffers filled back up and get ready to go for round two. Slow down, take your time and enjoy the ride. This is an amazing game. There's a lot of complexity to it, but at the same time, it can be simple if you make it that way. Keep it simple, stupid. All right, guys, that's enough out of me. These were your shabby tip tip top tip tip to top top these were your shabby top 10 tips for auto knots here i hope you enjoyed them if you made it to comment number 10 you heard it leave a comment down below letting me know so if you know what kiss is from keep it simple stupid also leave a comment below on that as well because it's something we should all know about okay every single one of us should know what that's from i'm looking at you all okay now, as usual, guys, if you're loving the series, if you love all that, hit that like button down below. I have a full, complete playthrough from tier one to ascendancy as well. I'll link it at the end. Check it out. You won't, you won't regret the ride. It is an amazing journey through frustration. And I've even got more tips in there as well as you see me go through the entire thing. Okay. And also, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well, because we have some great content that comes out every single day at 915 Eastern. As usual, guys, this has been Shabby Doo, and I hope the rest of your day is not too shabby.